This is the third and final video in our Yarn Method tutorial and in it I'm going to show you how we're going to pair up the remaining eight edge pairs around our 4x4 cube. So in order to solve the remaining eight edge pieces, I'm going to teach you the 3-2-3 edge pairing method, um, which is generally considered the easiest and most suitable method for pairing your last eight edges uh, during the Yao method for solving the 4x4. The 3-2-3 method stands for solving the first three edges at once, then solving the next two edges at once, and then finishing off the final three edges at once after that. And because there's a chance that edges can already be solved after you finish your cross and your centers, um, it won't necessarily, you won't necessarily be solving three edges, two edges, and then three edges exactly every single time, but that's just what the method is called. The first thing that's different about the 323 method is that we actually don't need to do any setting up uh, for our first three edges. All we need to do as soon as we finish our cross is just do a slice. So a wide U-turn and then look in this top left position for what edge piece is there. And so in this case, we have the uh, orange and the green edge. So what we need to do then is find the corresponding orange and green edge piece and put it in this uh, bottom right position down here. So looking around the top layer and at the back, we note that this orange and green piece is here. So we can insert it like that. So then if we were to slice back, for example, this edge pair would be solved. However, we're not going to slice back just yet. Uh, we're going to position two more edge pieces around our middle layer so that when we slice back, we create three solved edge pieces. So here when we slice back, we solve this orange and green one like so. And now we need to rotate the cube or, or look at this piece rather and figure out exactly uh, how we can insert another edge to create this its corresponding pair. So yeah, now we're going to rotate and look for the matching edge piece for this yellow and red piece. And it's actually right up here. So what we can do now is insert this uh, yellow and red one into this bottom right position down here. So now when we slice back, we're not only creating this pair, but we're also creating this uh, yellow and red pair. However, we're not going to slice back just yet because there's one more empty slot that we can fill with uh, another edge. So here, in the top position, uh, just above this yellow and red one, is the yellow and blue piece. So what we can do now is insert the corresponding yellow and blue piece down here, so that when we slice back, we create this first edge, this second edge, and a third edge down here. So before we slice back, we, we can find the last uh, blue, and, blue and yellow edge piece, insert it down here, fr prime f f prime r, like that, and then we can do a u prime, and now we've got three edges solved around the cube, just like that. Now there's only five edge pairs left for us to solve. So the next thing we're going to solve two at a time. Um, and you should be familiar with solving two at a time from the first few videos in the intermediate, uh, in the intermediate module. So here what we're going to do is solve these two. So we've got this red and blue one here and this red and blue one here. So we can insert it into this position like so, so that when we slice, we create this edge. And notice that this uh, orange and yellow piece is here. So when we slice, we create this edge and we want to slice back and form this orange and red, uh, this orange and yellow pair, sorry. So we can find its corresponding orange and yellow partner and put it down in this bottom right position by doing R U prime R prime like that. So when we slice back, we've solved this edge and also this edge. We can do the exact same thing for our last three edges. So let's first insert the other yellow and green edge piece. So we've got the first yellow and green one here, and now we can insert this yellow and green one down here on the right. Then when we slice, this, uh, this red and green one is here. So we can insert this last red and green one down here. So then when we slice back, we form this edge and this edge. In addition to that, because we had three edge pairs that we needed to solve, and when we slice back, we solve this one and this one, then the third one over here is solved by default. So that was a simple example of using the 323 edge pairing method, uh, where we didn't run into any tricky situations. Um, obviously, after this, what you should go on and do is solve the rest of the 3x3 stage, and we've already got our cross solved um, from before, so all we need to do is start filling in the F2L pairs around the cube. 
However, that was a very simple example of 323 edge pairing. Uh, there are many tricky situations that you can run into um, and you will need to be a little bit more freeform with your edge pairing and you won't always be doing exactly three, two and then three on every single solve. So I'm now going to show you a few examples of those tr tricky situations and the things I would do to sort of tackle them. So in this first case, let's say we've solved our cross edges as well as our centers and we go to do a wide U to set up to solve our first three edge pairs and we do it like so, um, and we notice we get into a situation where we've actually solved an edge piece, an edge pair here. So normally we'd, we would look for the corresponding edge piece for this one and place it down here, but in doing a U, we've actually already solved this edge pair. All you need to do in this situation is just rotate and start from the next edge piece. So um, here we've already got the solved pair, so we'll start from this one, which is the red and blue. Its red and blue partner is up here and so forth. A trickier situation that we can run into is after doing our cross and our centers, we'll do a wide U and we've got this yellow and blue edge piece here and its partner is up here so we can insert it into this front right position down here and so when we slice back for example it will be solved but obviously we want to find the corresponding edge piece for this uh, orange and green one and when we look around the cube we can't really find it uh, it's not back here, it's not on the top, and it's actually sitting in this front left position. So we can't just take this edge piece and put it over here without messing up these two. So the way I like to deal with this situation is instead of slicing back and then going again, what I would actually do is do another slice move, take this one out, unslice, and then continue on starting from this edge. So here's the uh, red and green one, and the red and green one is indeed in the top layer. So we can insert it down here like so, and then continue on. So those are just a few examples of tricky edge cases that you'll run into when doing the 323 edge pairing method uh, during your Yao solves. Those are certainly not the only tricky cases that you'll run into, but it's just important to keep in mind that in every solve, every solve will be different and you won't necessarily just be doing three edge pieces, three edge pairs, two edge pairs, and then three edge pairs every single solve. Sometimes you might be doing something like two and then two and then three if you already have a solved edge and you run into a tricky case around the middle layer. Um, it really just depends on how the edge pieces pop up around a cube. So then, when you're doing your final eight edges, it's important to be flexible and not restrict yourself to trying, trying to focus too much on exactly three, two, three, um, because there will be plenty of times where this will be completely different. Basically, I think being flexible just means being able to switch between, for example, three, two, three edge pairing to just doing two edge pieces at a time and, and things like that. 